I have always had an obsession with scars, and I don't know why, I just do. And I have a hard time pulling my eyes off of them. I'm not horrified, and I don't think scars are ugly. I'm just really overly curious. And I often ask people, how did that happen? And it's kind of inappropriate to do that, <laughs> especially to strangers at the trolley station. <laughs> um, I, um, I was five years old, and I watched my mother die from the back seat of my aunt's car. The truck my mother was in rolled four times where the sand met the asphalt as we were leaving the desert. I was going to bury her dead body with my tiny bare hands in what I thought was a cemetery nearby. It actually was a farm filled with cross-shaped pieces of wood for plants to grow on. And my mother didn't die, thank God, and she only has a few small scars from this incident, but 22 years later, I still find her picking tiny slivers of glass out of her scalp. My brother was five when I watched him get part of his finger bit off by a horse while he was feeding it an apple. We spent endless hours in the emergency room while he went through a torturous process of being repeatedly poked with needles and getting skin grafts and stitches. This happened right before Halloween and he got more candy that year than any kid in the history of trick-or-treating ever. I have a small burn on my right forearm from playing chicken with a lit cigarette. My girlfriend and I placed our forearms together and let the cigarette rest in the small crevice where our skin touched. This was in Mexico, over a bucket of beers and a considerable amount of Valium. <laughs> I, I won. <laughs> Lisa, a friend of mine, she only has one scar. It happened when she blacked out and drove a rental car into a church. She broke her shoulder. <laughs> she now has two titanium screws holding her arm in place. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Jessica was 11 years old when she put her hand through a window trying to break into her um, house while her parents were on vacation. And not knowing what to do at 11, um, she rode her bike through town to her friend Joy's house, leaving a trail of blood like breadcrumbs <laughs> through Havasu. Um, uh, Joy's mother bandaged her wounds, and, and Jessica spent the night with them. That night, Joy's father didn't come home. Jessica went back to her house the next morning to a repaired window and her uncle cleaning the mess from the day before. Later that day, Jessica received a phone call from Joy. Her father hadn't returned home that night because he drove out to the desert and shot himself in the head. My Aunt Pam was struck by lightning in an open field. She has no scar from this, and she has no fear of lightning now. <laughs> She's ballsy, that one. Christopher has a small one-inch scar on his right arm from his uh, stepbrother stabbing him with a screwdriver. From the looks of it, it was a flathead. <laughs> Madeline has a scar from kidney to kidney that reaches down into her labia. She became infected with a flesh-eating bacteria after an atopic pregnancy. Jay's wore scars on his neck from a tracheotomy. He got it when he was dead, or so he was told. He doesn't remember. Doug was at work bartending. He was polishing a wine glass, and the stem broke. He crammed the spike into his arm, and he didn't think it was that bad until the spurts of blood came like a horror movie. He smiled at everyone sitting at the bar and uh, exited and patched it up with some duct tape. He then went back to work. <laughs> The scar goes through the flames tattooed around his wrist. And finally, and this one's my favorite, there is Daniel. Daniel was drunk since it was the weekend of his birthday. It was about 3 a.m. when he went out to his car to get something, and he forgot his keys. He had to hop the fence to his gated apartment complex to get back in. 
Unfortunately, Daniel slipped and impaled his inner thigh about four inches deep. He kept passing out, as you can see there, and he doesn't remember much. The rescue workers cut him down off of the fence and sent him in the ambulance with the fence piece still stuck in his leg. They gave it back to him the next day when he was checking out of the hospital. <sighs> yeah, that's pure class right there. If anything, I hope I was able to remind you all that we're, we're just human. We're imperfect and we're curious. And I leave you with this quote from the one and only Leonard Cohen. Children show scars like metals. Lovers use them as secrets to reveal. A scar is what happens when the word is made flesh. Thank you.